Do prisons work? Not much. Um, and I don't think that's any more a revolutionary idea. Governments come and go with their uh, prison policies, sometimes saying they do work, sometimes saying they don't, sometimes wanting more prison, sometimes wanting less. Uh, but we have landed up having a very large prison population and as soon as anybody of discernment gets into them, they discover that nothing constructive is done there, prisoners aren't educated and so on and so forth. Um, I'm still concerned with a much more fundamental problem, having been the fortunate child of parents and of a society that brought me up peacefully to respect the law, to have the benefits of respecting the law, to have the benefits of education, so that I never really had to transgress the law, nor come to that, was I ever really in a position where uh, the vectors of society would have pushed me to becoming a, an offender. But that doesn't mean to say I can't understand that the majority of the people who do offend could probably, can probably, and should probably, in part or whole, say society is to blame. Not always, of course. There are people who make very conscious decisions to break their contract with society, city bankers, people who get into debt, uh, people who drink too much and beat up their partners or others and so on, or who drive recklessly. There are people who make those very obvious contractual breaches and who uh, therefore have to be uh, approached on the basis that they are, as it were, intentional criminals. They are criminals and they, they had a clear choice as to what they should do. But there are many other people who, if, if one's candid about it and honest about it, find themselves committing crimes in circumstances which are such that if you or I or uh, many other people have found themselves in the circumstances they face, we'd have landed up doing what they did. And that question really has to be faced. Societies never want to ask that question. It's too difficult. And the clearest way of asking it was well, how many, what, four years ago in the riots here in London, where a lot of the rioting happened on the uh, less fortunate estates in South London and also, I think, in North London. Um, the, the question one could so easily ask is if the children of the privileged political class who, for much of their lives, it appear, live in Gloucestershire, had in fact been swapped at birth with the children of the estates from which some of this violence uh, and very serious behaviour with terrible consequences for innocent individuals, I don't reject, don't suggest otherwise, but if you'd swap the children at birth, would the behaviour have been the same? Probably, yes. Um, and that's something we, we simply have to face up to. It. And the only way you can face it up to it is by saying, before you look at what prisons do or don't do, you really have to see to what extent, as a society, we want to keep people out of prison and are prepared to do whatever is necessary to keep them out. That, I suspect, the answer is yes, but not too much. We want to keep people out of prison, but we aren't actually prepared to spend that much time, money, and resources doing it. Put another way, very unattractive way, we don't want to live in a crime-free society. Nobody does. We want to live in a society with a controllable measure of crime that leaves the division between the criminals and the non-criminals, one that sustains societies in a happy or more probably unhappy equilibrium. So starting with those um, thoughts, which are probably all wholly contrary to the uh, received thinking of many people, including many lawyers, you then ask the question, well, what does prison do? And it's pretty clear it doesn't necessarily do very much. There are courses which are very successful, specialist courses on sexual offenders, and the specialist courses enabling the illiterate to read and write, but nothing like enough. And I think we are going to find, I hope in this lecture, that looking around the world, not just obvious candidate countries like Norway, but also places like the South of America, the United States of America, I mean, which have very high prison populations, have realized that imprisoning doesn't work unless you have associated with it a philosophy that can enable the prisoner to be properly rehabilitated, to return before the end of his life, or to turn before the end of his life, the sort of life he might have led, led uh, had things been different from the start.